out uh, touching the banner for the first time? Uh, it was unbelievable, you know. It, it's only a few things that's even close to having that feeling, you know. It's something not a lot of people get to do, so it was a privilege to be able to do that and get to do it a few more times, so I'm gonna make it the most out of every opportunity. You seem to get some penetration. Uh, were you pretty pleased with your first start, your first um, game? Yes, but I'm always looking to improve every single week. That's what grinding throughout the weeks, just sticking to what I do during my job, and if I don't get pressures, all I know is I'm gonna do my job. Don Brown talked about how much stronger you are. Did you realize how much stronger you had to get? And Talk about how Ben Herbert got it out of you. Um, well, coming in, I was about like 240, 242 or whatever. By the end of the summer, I was 260. And we we worked. Like, I put in the work. I put in the time. Coach Herb guided me through it. And we made, we made it happen. You know, I feel stronger. I feel faster. I feel quicker. So I'm pleased with it. He's pleased with it. Only looking to get better. Mike, what was the selling point to, to come here for this season? What was that? What was, your, what was the selling point to get you here? Um, How did you come here? I'm, I mean, Michigan always been a dream of mine. It was always been a dream of mine my whole childhood. Me and my father always watched Michigan games. And, you know, getting that offer was kind of just like, as soon as I got the offer, I knew, like, I'm coming to Michigan. Like, I'm 45 minutes from home. My parents love that. They get to come out to uh, the big house every Saturday when we do have home games. And we they get to cheer me on, support me, because they've been behind me since day one. So. Being able to come to University of Michigan, having it be my dream school, and having to have my parents come out and watch me do what I do on the field is it's a blessing. When did you know that was going to be a possibility or might be a possibility? Um, well, when I hopped in the transfer portal, a few schools had called my phone or whatever and hit up my parents. Then University of Michigan came, and as soon as they came, I, like I said, I pretty much already knew the answer. Like It was go time. What was the message from Don Brown? Did he envision you playing a certain way, or what did he tell you? Um, he just told me that uh, they're looking for depth and whatever I can do to help the defense. That's what I'm gonna do. You know, not a lot of guys get the opportunity to play for the University of Michigan. So, like, to be here is a privilege, and I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, grinding, and like I said, it's a blessing to be here. You have a new team, new coaches, new new teammates. How quickly did you acclimate? Um. Well, I acclimated real quick. Like, my soon since day one, as soon as I got here, my teammates had open arms for me. So, like, as soon as I got here, guys were taking me in, and I was hanging out with them off the field, on the field, during workouts, after workouts, you know, getting in extra time with them. So, them guys brought me in like I've been here for the last four years. So, I'm pleased with that, and they're pleased to have me here. So, were your parents the game on Saturday? Yep, they were. Did you, have, did you have a relationship with anybody on the team before you got here, you know, being an in-state kid? I mean, who did you um, know any of these guys? Yeah, I knew a, full, a few of them. Uh, I knew LaVert Hill, uh, Donovan, uh, True Wilson. We went to high school yeah. together. I knew some ex-guys that was uh, Wolverines, uh, like Jared Wangler. So I knew a few ties that were at Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I know he doesn't coach your position, but did you reach out to Sean Moore at all? Because I know you – Oh, yeah, me, me, me and Coach Moore go way back because he was at Central. So we always had – Communication. That's my guys. All love for him. What was his message to you to try to get you to come here? Um, he just said it's an opportunity. Like they threw their hat in the ring, and you know, like I said, as soon as they threw their hat in the ring, he knew that I love Michigan. Knew I was a big Michigan guy, and threw the hat in the ring, and you know, I came in. Did you see it at all as a risk? I mean, you don't establish yourself there. You were doing well there. Yeah, uh, I knew it was for sure a gamble, but you know, I know the work that I put in. I know that you get what you put in. So if you put in a lot of work, something good is going to come out of it. There's always good things out of people that happen to good people. You know, you, I put in a lot of work throughout the summer. I knew what I was getting myself into, and I gambled on myself because I knew at the end of the day, like, I can do it. Did you consider going to the NFL after last year? Oh, uh, yes, I did. Why, why did you decide to come back? Um, I just felt like uh, doing one more year would be like the icing on the cake or like the cherry on top. I knew that uh, last season it was it was a pretty good season that I could have made the jump, but like, why not stay one more year? And plus, I got my degree staying one more one more semester. That next semester, I got my degree then at the University of Michigan. So. You said it was a dream to be here. Do you kind of carry that with you that you had to take a different route here? Uh, 
kind of an unorthodox one going through Central? Um, yeah, I take it with me every day. You know, every day I remind myself that you play for the University of Michigan, this is your dream, but at the same time, you know it's your grind. Like, I don't take no days off. I look myself in the mirror and tell myself, like, if you're going to be this big guy on the field, you got to live up to it. So, you know, I check myself every morning, look myself in the mirror every morning, and, you know, I knew what I signed up for, and I'm working. You said you acclimated pretty quickly, but uh, how different was it coming into this program particularly? Uh, there was a few differences. Uh, I'd say probably just, like, scheme-wise and, you know, um, just understanding the style of play. So, like, there's a few differences, but, like, there's not too many that, you know, that separate Central Michigan or whatever. Respect, all respect to Central Michigan, but, like, you know, I'm at University of Michigan now, so it's a blessing to be here, and I'm proud to be here. What was it like, your first meeting with, uh, team meeting with Don Brown? He's kind of mm -hmm. enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah, very enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, it was great, you know. Every meeting when you get you fired up, you just be ready to run through a wall, you know. That's how intense his speeches is and how intense he, you know, value his, his ways and the way he coached with us. So I love being on the Don Brown system. And, you know, like I said, he gets you fired up. What's his message to you guys after this first game? Um, Just a win is a win. And you just got to come back ready to improve every single week, you know. Uh, we got Army coming in this week. We got to get the job done. We don't overlook anybody. We're going to put the same work in we put in last week against Middle Tennessee, and we're just going to keep keep grinding the gears, you know, keep uh, keep improving on our details and just grind. What is the challenge playing Army? I mean, Don said he's been mm -hmm. focusing on them, thinking about them since the spring, and, mm -hmm. and working toward this. Oh, I mean, everybody know that Army's a triple option. Mm -hmm. They like to run the ball all four downs, but you know. We're, we're practicing every single day for a reason. We're wrapping that out every single day for a reason. Everybody got jobs. Everybody sticks to their jobs. There's no reason why we can't have the same outcome that we had last week. You guys respect your opponents, I'm sure. I mean, mm -hmm. Absolutely. is there a different level with, with Army when you see it when a service academy coming in? Um, It's a faceless opponent. We take every opponent the same way. You know, we're going to go into that week prepar preparing like we're going to win, preparing like we're going to get our jobs done. So. Like I said, we don't overlook nobody, underlook anybody. So, you know, we're coming in with the same attitude that, like, we got to win. A couple guys said eye discipline is a big deal when you're facing the triple option. What, what does that look like when you're on the field? What's going through your head when a play's developing? Um, really um, just understanding your job and understanding where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and who has who, whoever uh, is on the field, you know. so. One guy has the back, one guy has the QB. So it's just like being at the right place at the right time, kind of, sort of. Time for one or two more for Mike. What's your relationship been like with uh, Coach Nua since you got here? Oh, yeah, Coach Nua, that's my guy. He's real down to earth. He's a real genuinely uh, good coach. I love him to death. Since day one, since the first time I talked to him, I knew he was a genuine down to earth person. Um, he even communicates with my parents, and my parents love him. Specifically, my mom love them because they always touch bases about me, making sure I'm on my on my P's and Q's, you know. So, so yeah, there's nothing but love for Coach Noel. He's a great coach, great guy on and off the field, even better guy off the field. The coaches have also talked about your leadership, what you brought. I mean, do you feel comfortable enough to, to you know tell people what they should be doing? Or uh, absolutely, you know, you got to hold guys accountable because you know I expect to be held accountable. So everybody got to be able to have open ears, closed mouth sometimes, and that's how I kind of view it. You know, if somebody's holding me accountable, I close my mouth and I listen. If I hold somebody else accountable, I expect the same. So it's all about holding each other accountable, and that's what's really going to have a big, a big, uh, a big uh, response to our end goal at the end of the season: holding everybody accountable to their jobs. What's your assessment of, of Aiden Hutchinson? Oh, great guy. Great player on the field. Great kid off the field. You know, he's a hard worker. He competes every snap. I love the kid. Me and him got real close over the summer. We were always playing basketball uh, right above our weight room. We always were just shooting and competing and something. I knew then he was a competitor. So, 
You guys showed that uh, four defensive end look a couple times on Saturday. What's that like to be able to get that get out there with all three uh, or with all four? Oh, uh, it's great because you know it's a lot of quickness and speed on that front. So you know we can we can attack every uh, every position on offensive line and. We got a whole lot more of that coming this season, so I'm excited. Does that pose any differences for you personally? Uh, no, I enjoy it because, you know, it's either uh, the guy ahead of me going to block me or he's going to whiff or, you know, I'm not trying to get blocked. So it's the same <laughs> thing every four downs. I'm not trying to get blocked. So It's a little frustrating how quickly they got the ball out. Um, Kind of, sir, because, you know, guys like to get sacks, get quarterback hits, quarterback pressures, but, you know, rally to the ball. You get a you get a tackle or whatever. You get to clean it up. So just rally to the ball and something happened. One of our guys rally to the ball, got a forced fumble. So I mean, quick screen, forced fumble. I'll take it. <laughs>